In the exchange between Kamala Harris and Bill Whitaker, we see the well-worn tension between progressive economic ideas and the call for fiscal caution, an ongoing theme in political discourse. Harris faces pointed questions about the viability of her economic proposals, especially regarding their impact on the federal deficit. Her key initiatives, such as expanding child tax credits, offering tax breaks for first-time homebuyers, and incentivizing small businesses, seek to strengthen the middle class, but come with the unavoidable question, how will they be funded? You want to expand uh, the child tax credit. Yes, I do. You want to give tax breaks to first-time home buyers yes. and people starting small businesses. Correct. But it is estimated by the nonpartisan committee for responsible federal budget that your economic plan would add three trillion dollars to the federal deficit over the next decade. How are you going to pay for that? Okay, so the other econ economists that have reviewed my plan versus my opponent and determined that my economic plan would strengthen America's economy his would weaken it. But my plan, Bill, if you don't mind, my plan is about saying that when you invest in small businesses, you invest in the middle class and you strengthen America's economy. Small businesses are part of the backbone of America's economy. But, but pardon me, Madam Vice President. I, the, the question was, how are you going to pay for it? Well, one of the things is I'm going to make sure that the richest among us who can afford it pay their fair share in taxes. It is not right that teachers and nurses and firefighters are paying a higher tax rate than billionaires and the biggest corporations. But, and but, I plan on making that fair. But we're dealing with the real world here. But the real world includes... How are you going to get this through Congress? You know, when you talk quietly with a lot of folks in Congress, they know exactly what I'm talking about because their constituents know exactly what I'm talking about. Their constituents are those firefighters and teachers and nurses. Their constituents are middle-class, hardworking folk. And Congress has shown no inclination to move in your direction. I, I disagree with you. There are plenty of leaders in Congress who understand and know that the Trump tax cuts blew up our federal deficit. None of us, and certainly I cannot afford to be myopic in terms of how I think about strengthening America's economy. Let me tell you something. I am a devout public servant. You know that. I'm also a capitalist. And I know the limitations of government. Whitaker, representing a critical view, presses Harris on this central issue. Funding. Rather than giving a direct answer, Harris frequently pivots to criticize the economic outcomes of the Trump administration and champions the idea that the wealthy must pay their fair share. While this sentiment finds favor among those frustrated with wealth inequality, it doesn't fully address concerns about fiscal sustainability. One of the most glaring criticisms is that Harris's plans could add $3 trillion to the deficit over the next decade, a figure that alarms deficit hawks. The potential consequences, rising interest rates, inflationary pressures, and reduced private investment are real-world risks of unchecked spending. Harris's primary solution, raising taxes on the wealthy, is a classic progressive stance. But critics argue that this approach has its limitations. Historically, taxing the wealthy more heavily doesn't always bring in the expected revenue, partly because the wealthy can utilize sophisticated tax avoidance strategies. Additionally, raising taxes on businesses, even large corporations, can stifle economic growth particularly for small and medium-sized enterprises, the very businesses Harris aims to support. Harris's self-identification as a capitalist is intriguing, given that many of her policies lean toward wealth redistribution and government intervention, principles more closely aligned with socialist frameworks. This presents a contradiction in her rhetoric. A capitalist economy thrives on competition, innovation, and relatively low barriers to entrepreneurship, but the tax burden Harris proposes could undermine these very foundations. Whitaker also challenges Harris on the political feasibility of her plans. Passing such sweeping reforms through a divided Congress, where even moderate Democrats may resist tax hikes, is far from guaranteed. The opposition is not purely ideological. It's also grounded in a belief 
that these policies could have adverse effects on the broader economy. Detractors argue that Harris's vision represents an overreach of government power, which could limit economic freedom and hamper the dynamism that fuels growth. Small and medium-sized businesses, often the backbone of the economy, are especially sensitive to regulatory burdens and taxation. Increasing taxes on the wealthy and corporations to fund middle-class benefits raises both moral and philosophical concerns. Many believe in equality of opportunity, not outcomes, and see disproportionate taxation as punishing success rather than promoting a more level playing field. Instead of redistributing wealth, critics argue that policies should encourage hard work, entrepreneurship, and self-reliance, allowing individuals to rise through their own efforts rather than through government intervention.